Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at working out the volume and surface area of cones. Now the question that you can see on the screen is a quite a complex one where we're looking to work out the volume where we don't have the height. So that is the kind of question we're going to build up to, but before then we need to have a look at working out the surface area, the curved surface area, and also the volume of a cone, and then we'll discuss how to approach one of these trickier questions at the end. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off by looking at the surface area. Now for this top type of topic here, you are going to need a calculator, so do make sure you've got a calculator to hand, because we're going to be using the pi button and we're going to be typing this into our calculator. So grab your calculator if you need to, but otherwise we're going to get started. So it says here work out the surface area of the cone and give your answer to two decimal places. Now we'll deal with that at the end. The important part here, look, is that we have some formulas to the side. Now on the exam you would be given the formulas for working out the volume and the curved surface area of the cone, and you can see them to the side. So we're gonna be looking at this one to start with the curved surface area. And you can see there that the curved surface area is given to us, and it is pi times radius times the length. And the length there is the diagonal length going down the side of the cone. So let's have a look in this question. Are we given those lengths? Well, we are given L, which is 12.6. We are given the radius, which is 5.7, and pi is obviously the button on our calculator. So if we want to work out the surface area here, we've got a formula for getting the curved part around the outside, but we're also going to have to add on to that the area of the circle, which is on the bottom. And if you don't know already, which hopefully you do, and again I'll link the video for areas of a circle in the description, but the formula for the area of a circle area is equal to pi r squared. So we've got everything we need now to put it all together. We're going to have to do pi r squared for the area of the circle and pi r l for the curved surface area around the outside of the top of the cone. So if we start, uh, let's work out the curved surface area to start with. So the curved surface area will be equal to pi multiplied by the radius, which is 5.7, multiplied by the length, which is 12.6. And this question is very nice because it gives us all of those pieces. The question that I showed you at the start does have a few extra steps. But let's start with this one. So pi times 5.7 times 12.6, all on the calculator. Don't forget to turn that back into a decimal. And it comes out as 225. And there's lots of decimals here, 0.629, 1844. So that's the curved surface area. And notice I've also written down all the decimals there because when we come to adding these two pieces together, I don't wanna get any rounding errors before getting my final answer. So onto the area of the circle, and we'll do that over here to the side. So for the circle, if we type that into the calculator, that is going to be pi times the radius squared. The radius is 5.7, so times 5.7 squared. Again, typing that in on your calculator, pi times 5.7 squared gets you an answer when we convert it into a decimal as 102.0703453. There we go. So we just need to add these two numbers together. We've got the area of the circle and we've got the curved surface area. So to finish this off, we would just take those two numbers, combine them together. So we would do the 102. 0 0.07 rather than writing it all down here and filling the screen I'm just going to put the three dots there and I'm going to add that to 225.629 again the full decimal there and let's see what we get as a final answer so I've already got 102.07 on my calculator so I can just click plus 225.629 and 1844 click equals and we've got our final answer here and my final answer comes out as 327.699 and then 5297. And there we go. Right, now the question did say to give our answer to two decimal places, so we are gonna need to round this as well as an extra step. So chopping that after the nine there, which would actually give us an interesting bit of rounding because the 69 is gonna round up to 70. So I would give my final answer 
as 327.70. Now it does say give it to two decimal places, so even though there's a zero at the end, I'm gonna leave that there because it has asked me to give it to two decimal places. And it says the surface area, so we are working with centimeters squared. So my final answer is centimeters squared, and there we go, 327.70 centimeters squared, and there is our final answer. Right, so there we go, there's quite a lot of steps. You've got to work out the curved surface area, the circle on the bottom, add it all together and make sure you round it correctly. But that's how we're gonna work out the surface area of a cone. So let's have a look at a question for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your question. So pause the video there, have a go at working out the surface area of this cone, and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Right, okay, so let's get to work. We've got two bits to work out. We've got the area of the circle. So if we work out the circle to start with, and the circle is pi r squared, so we are going to do pi times six squared. And if we type that in, pi times six squared comes out as 113.09733355. Then we've also got to work out the curved area so the curved part, and that is going to be pi rl, so pi times 6 times 15. And again, we can type that in, pi times 6 times 15, and that gives us an answer of 282.74333388. So we'll take those two numbers, we'll add them both together, and let's see what we get. So 282 plus the 113 number, so 0 0.09, make sure you type it all in, 73355, and that is equal to a total area there of 395.8406743. And again, we just need to finish this off, so rounding it to two decimal places, chopping it after the four there, gives us a much nicer rounding scenario, as that just comes out as 395 0.84, as it's a zero after the line, units, centimetres squared. And there we go, that is how to work out the surface area of a cone, and hopefully that was okay for you. Right, let's have a look at working out the volume of a cone then. Right, so if you can work out the surface area of a cone, working out the volume of a cone is much easier. Again, the formula is given to us, so it's given to us just on the side here, and the volume of a cone is one third times pi times r squared times the height. So we do need to have the height for this one, and as you can see in this diagram, we have been given the height. So if we want to type this all in, again, you just need to know a few buttons here. You need to know your fraction button. Obviously, if you are using a Casio, then you have a fraction button which you should know how to use already. If not, you would just have to use one divided by three. So typing in one divided by three, clicking equals, and then using that number. But we're going to type it all in, so our volume is going to be one third. And just typing that in on the calculator, one on the top, three on the bottom, come out for your fraction, multiplied by pi, multiplied by the radius squared, the radius in this question is five, so that would be five squared, and then multiplying that by the height, and the height in this question is given to us, it's eight. So times by eight, and typing that all in, so one third times pi times five squared times eight comes out as a final answer when you convert that into a decimal, it comes out as 209.439.5102. And again, this question says to give your answer to two decimal places. So we just need to round that correctly, chopping it after the three, and we would get a final answer of 209.44. This time we're looking at volume, so units are still centimetered, centimeters, but we are gonna have centimeter cubed. And there we go, that is the volume of a cone. So as you can see, much easier than working out the surface area, which is why I started with surface area, as this one here is just plugging those numbers into the formula that's given. So there we go, that's your formula. You do need to make sure that you've written that down, although it will be given, you in, uh, given to you in an exam. But let's have a go at practicing one that you can have a go at. Okay, so here's a question for you to have a go at before we have a look at our last one. So pause the video there, have a go at this, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so working out the volume of the cone. So again, we're gonna do one third. We're gonna multiply it by pi. Then we're gonna multiply it by the radius squared. Now hopefully you noticed on this one here that the radius 
is not actually given to us. It's actually given us the diameter across the bottom of the circle. So in order to do this, we're going to have to actually get the radius, in which case we just need to halve the diameter. The diameter there is 10, so ours will be 5. So pi times 5 squared, multiplied by the height, which this time is 12, and then we just need to type that in. So fraction button, 1 third times pi times 5 squared times 12, and when we click equals, we get the answer 314.1592654. And again, we want to chop this off to two decimal places, so after the 5, it's a 9 afterwards, so it is going to round up. So our final answer is 314.16. It's in centimetres and it's volume, so centimetres cubed. And there we go, there's our final answer. Cool, so I hope you got that okay. And now we're going to have a look at our final question where we are working out the volume of a cone, but the height has not been given to us. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this is the question that we had right at the start, although we did look at working out the surface area. Now this one here is asking us to work out the volume, and you can notice that we've not been given the height. But you might also notice that inside the cone there, you can see that there is a right-angled triangle. Now if we can make a right-angled triangle, which we can inside a cone, then we can perhaps use a different element of maths. And you should know that when we are using right-angled triangles, perhaps we might use Pythagoras and perhaps we might be using some trigonometry. Now just for this one, we're not using any angles, we are just looking at a length, so we can actually use Pythagoras to work this out. And if I was to draw this triangle to the side, you can see that we have the hypotenuse, which is 12.6, and we have one of the shorter lengths, which is 5.7, and we want to work out this length here. So when we are using Pythagoras, we are going to do both the numbers squared. We're either going to add them or take them away from each other. In this case, we'll do a takeaway because we're looking for a shorter side, and then we'll square root our answer. So to get the height, we are going to do 12.6 squared, take away 5.7 squared, and then square root the answer. And if you're not sure on Pythagoras, again, I'm going to link that for you so that you can have a look at some Pythagoras if you need to. So if we type that into our calculator, and you can, can type it in in one go, so 12.6 squared, take away 5.7 squared, we get an answer, and it comes out as 11.2369948. Now that is now our height, so we can actually go about working out the, the actual volume of this cone now. But you've got to be careful because obviously that height there is quite a long decimal and we don't want to round it until the very end, so I'm going to leave that on my calculator. Now we can actually go about working out the volume, so I would do one third multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius squared, which is 5.7, so times 5.7 squared, multiplied by this long decimal, so 11.23699248. There we go. I'm going to leave that number on my calculator so I don't have to type it back in. So I've got 1 over 3 multiplied by pi multiplied by 5.7 squared and then I'm just going to press times the answer and that will put that previous answer in and I will get a final answer here of 382.3212343. And again, finishing this question off, we just need to round it to two decimal places so after the two, and that is going to give us a final answer here of 382.32 volume again, so centimetres cubed. And there we go, there's our final answer. So as you can see, even if we don't have the height, we can use other elements of maths. In this case, we were using Pythagoras to work out that height and therefore work out the volume. So there we go, I hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see you for the next video.